I have a secret to share with you today. It's about to take your coding assistant to the next level. It's all started two days ago when I discovered that XAI, the company founded by Elon Musk, released a free API for Grok. And it's available for free until the end of the year. And I combined it with a prompt that I found on Reddit into Klein and Continue. This prompt will optimize the code, generate a rock solid testing, and even help you with refactoring the code and creating the project from the start up. So if you're ready to take your coding skill to the new heights without spending hours on studying, stick around. In the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to tap into this power for free setup and start coding like a bro. It's free real estate. I found out that XAI providing Grok 2 until the end of the year for free. You can get the Grok Beta, the new model from the Grok family, and it have 128k context links, which is very decent. You can do function calling with it, so you can build agents and rags, and it's compatible with the SDK of Anthropic and OpenAI. Until the end of the 2024, which is this year, all the user can get $25 free per month. So it's basically just two months. You don't have to put your credit card or anything. You just log in inside XAI and click start building now. For the first time when you enter this page, it will require you to create an account. Far as I know, it's not blocked at any country and I am in Egypt a lot of after you're done with registering your account, create a new API key. You will get this kind of dashboard to show you how many credits that's remaining and what the models that's available for us. The only model that we can use so far is the Grok in beta. And now open your Visual Studio code and enter the client. Make sure that client is 100% up to date because they keep publishing a new improvement of this extension. Now we want to connect this XAI ABI on ABI provider inside client. All you have to do is select the OpenAI compatibility is over here. As you can see here from the last video that I made, I connected my client to the hyperbolic ABI to access the Quinn 2.5 Coder 32B. Right now I'm gonna switch this ABI and put the ABI access over here. Switch your base URI to the ABI.x.ai version 1, which is the, the ABI URL that you will get inside XAI. And the name of the model is Grok Beta. And put the ABI key that we got from here. I'm gonna talk about this instruction in a minute, but let me show you right now it's working. We click done. I wanted to create a simple history page that will show us the history of looking to other Pokemon inside the Pokedex that I have created a while ago. And to be honest, it did better than I expected and it designed this page. As you can see here, it gave me this kind of clean search history. The UI is really clean and I can click view. It will show me the Pokemon that I searched for and what I have added. It's really decent. And let's check the credits. It seemed like I burned about 51 cents, which is, seems a lot, which is kind of a lot, but this model is expensive. And now let's talk about this prompt. This prompt I found two days ago on Reddit, someone saying that he used this prompt as client custom instruction that, that changed the game for him. And I kind of started to read it. The first thing lit up in my mind, this will burn more tokens, okay? But it will actually improve the quality of the coding that he will get. It's pretty lengthy and I will put the post for it in the comments down below. But this is basically the prompt I'm using right now. It's instruction, the project initialization, when you create a new project, set up and maintain the foundation of the project management. This is for when you're building a new project from the ground up and it gives it details like creating a log for the existing folders and files, task execution, break down the user request into actionable steps and details split the task into clear numbered steps basically make it into smaller tasks and give them numbers it's so far so amazing then it get even better it give you credential management clearly explains the purpose of the credential requested from the user guides them validate the credential 
and avoid storing credentials in plain text. Provide guidance on secure storage. It's like a senior master prompt for the stuff that we sometimes, even me who have been coding for web development about eight years right now, implement and recommend proper refresh. Even file handling and ensure that files are organized, modular, and maintainable. It's like the master prompt of creating any project that you want. And error reporting even provide actionable feedback to user and maintain error logs. And honestly, it's really decent. It's very long, very, very long, but warning, it will burn a lot of tokens, all right? So you can put it in Klein over here, custom instruction, and you can put it only one when you basically building the project and let it run. It will be sent by the end of the system prompt at every request. But the cool stuff continue, which got a new update, fixed a lot of stuff that I have been struggling with right now. If you are using continue, you will have access to the terminal to execute some commands. You can create this custom prompt and use it only when you want to by typing slash in the chat and creating custom prompt. The custom prompt will open a new file for you. Inside it, you will find these kind of three bars in the file. One will put the temperature, control the temperature of the model, the max tokens in the system prompt, which this is the place we go into about the prompt inside, and then the input. And finally, if you wanted to add like a certain, a certain necessary step for each time that you create a request. I created this new file for the master prompt and about the temperature for zero and max token is for 1096. And here is the system prompt that you can use it only when you have to. And finally, in the end is the input and you can call it only when you want. You can make it even better by using cursor the directory. This is a new project that I found a few days ago on Twitter. What make it really cool that you can, for example, if you're working with React Native, we can copy any prompt from this. For example, this one, I will copy it from over here and I will go back and create a new file for build a custom prompt. You can click this button. It will create a new file for you and delete everything and both the temperature and max token and the system and hit it the prompt inside it over there and you can call it anytime that you want as you can see it's a very long long prompt for the system save it right now we need to refresh visual studio code so it can show up over here and now after i restore visual studio code and if you type slash in the chat over there you will get the new prompt over there and you can choose the prompt that you want and write over there whatever what you want maybe create a new page inside the app improve bug all this kind of stuff so i'm going to use this prompt that i found in cursor directory i'm going to use this prompt to show you an example how it works copy it and put it in a new file and i called it nextjs because it's only work on nextjs kind of prompt and i requested from the Sonnet 3.5 to design a new welcoming page for the Bokidex app that greet new user with clean modern UI, use dark theme with vibrant orange for gaming inspired feel. Keep the layout cool and engaging, making it navigating easy for user to start exploring the Bokidex app. And I gave it the entire code base that I have, which is kinda, and before we read the results and show it in action, Actually, the prompt is telling the system or the large language model that it's an export full stack web developer focused on producing clear, readable Next.js code, Next.js 14, Superbase, Tailwind, and TypeScript. And usually, when I request anything inside Continue, it will automatically create it in JavaScript. But as you can see here, it's creating this logic in, in TypeScript, and I didn't set any TypeScript inside this prompt. But because it's inside this main master prompt of Nikki.js, it automatically used it. And this, the simple page that I got, it's like have this kind of gaming websites feeling. We're using orange and dark blue. And we have here hover effect and a few icons. Yeah, it's functional. But as you've seen that the prompt effect will change a little bit how the large language model behave. But be careful when to use it and when not to use it and the token consumption 
And one more additional thing I tested with Gemini, I tested with GPT 4.0, I even tested it with the Quinn 2.5 coder, and I found the better the model, the better the prompt will behave. Surprise, surprise, but I thought it will improve the bad models. And this is kind of happened slightly for Gemini. So go ahead, use the stuff that I gave you, the, the cursor directory. I'm going to leave the link for it down below. And I'm going to leave the post for the Reddit master prompt and also the access for XAI ABI. Try to use the, all the credit before the end of the year. If you found this video, respecting your time and providing you with valuable information please hit the like button and subscription i am getting near the 3000 subscriber finally thank you guys for all the comments your opinion about the last video even if you think the model of the queen 2.5 coder is trash i respect your opinion even i'm kind of confused why people call it trash even if it's open source and it's performing very great in some area Anyway, maybe this is a discussion for another video. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.